Welcome to this service at Faith and Victory Church. This is the place to come to receive your miracle from God. Now, let's join our service already in progress. Hallelujah. All right. We're uh, talking about, we're, actually tonight we're going to be ministering on how to become a member of the Hall of Fame of Faith. And if somebody wouldn't mind that gets an opportunity to run get me some water, um, It'd be nice to have some water up here. Praise the Lord. We'll start from Hebrews chapter 11. Let's, let's do a redo. Brother Bill, here we are. Q. Um, how to become a member of the Hall of Fame of Faith. Hebrews chapter 11. And really, it, we'd have to read the entire chapter. Um, so I don't think we're going to read the entire chapter. We're just going to read um, a few verses here. And then we'll come back and pick up a few. Well, I, I've got to read through verse 29 or 30. So. Uh, we'll leave off the last nine. How about that? All right. It says, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. For by it the elders obtained a good report. Through faith we understand that the world is refrained by the word of God, so that the things which are seen were made of things which do not, uh, were not made of things which do appear. By faith Abel offered unto God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain, by which he obtained witness that he was righteous. Uh, that's a key point there. You want to underline that. God testifying of his gifts, and by it being dead, yet speaketh. By faith Enoch was translated that he should not see death, and was not found, because God had translated him. For before his translation, he had this testimony that he pleased God. Hallelujah. Uh, let's see where I was. That he pleased God. That he, uh, for they that cometh to God must believe that he is. See, without faith it's impossible to please him. For they that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. By faith Noah, warned of God the things not seen as yet move with fear, prepared an ark to the saving of his house, by the which he condemned the world and became heir of the righteousness which is of, or which is by faith. By faith Abraham, when he was called, to go out into a place which he should have to receive for an inheritance, obeyed. Then he went out, not knowing whether he went. By faith he sojourned in a land of promise, as in a strange country, dwelling in tabernacles with Isaac and Jacob, the, um, the heirs with him of the same promise. For he looked for a city who, which had foundations, whose builder and maker is God. Through faith also Sarah herself received strength to conceive seed, and was delivered of a child when she was past age, because... She judged him faithful who had promised. There sprang up even one of him as good as dead, as many as the stars of the sky and the multitude, and as the sand which is by the seashore innumerable. These all died in faith, having not received the promises, but having seen them afar off, and were persuaded of them, and embraced them, and confessed that they were strangers and pilgrims on the earth. Hallelujah. For they that say such things declare plainly they seek a country. And truly, if they had been mindful of that country from whence they came out, they might have had opportunity to return. But now they desire a better country, that is, a heavenly, wherefore God is not ashamed to be called their God, for he hath prepared for them a city. By faith, when Abraham was tried, he offered up Isaac. And that he received the promises offered to his only begotten son, of whom it was said, that in Isaac shall thy seed be called. Hallelujah. Accounting that God was able to raise him up even from the dead. From whence also he received him in a figure. By faith Isaac blessed Jacob and Esau concerning things to come. Hallelujah. By Jacob when he was dying. By faith Jacob when he was dying blessed both the sons of Joseph and worshiped leaning upon his staff. By faith Joseph when he died made mention of the departing of the children of Israel and gave commandment concerning his bones. By faith Moses when he was born was hid three months of his parents because they saw he was a proper child and they were not afraid of the king's commandment. By faith Moses when he was come to years refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter um, choosing rather to suffer affliction with the people of God than to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season. Esteeming the reproach of the people of God, um, I'm sorry, esteeming the reproach of Christ greater riches than the treasures of Egypt, for he had respect and the recompense of the reward. By faith, he forsook Egypt, not fearing the wrath of the king, for he endured as seeing him who is invisible. Through faith, he kept the Passover and sprinkling of blood, lest he, was destroy, lest, uh, he that destroyed the firstborn should touch them. By faith, they passed through the Red Sea as on dry land, and when the Egyptians essayed to do so, they were drowned. And we'll just stop there. 
And if you want to, you can read the rest of the chapter. Okay, and of course in here is a list of, you know, of, of all the, what we refer to, you know, Gideon and Barak and Samson and Jephthah and David and Samuel and the prophets, you know, the, the hall of fame of faith. And so uh, here are some keys to becoming a member. Everybody say a member of the hall of fame of faith. Number one, you got to be righteous. You got to be in the kingdom to get, to, be, to get into the hall. You cannot get into the hall of fame at uh, Cooperstown uh, for baseball if you don't play baseball. You don't get into the Hall of Fame for football unless you play football, okay? You have to have a connection to it to get to the Hall of Fame. You got to have a connection to the kingdom to get into the Hall of Fame of faith. Amen? How to, righteousness, again, is right standing with God. It is covenant-based. Righteousness uh, under the old covenant was still covenant-based. Under the old covenant, according to the covenant that God made with Abraham, and under the new, according uh, to the covenant God made with Jesus. Praise God. Under the new old covenant, and he, according to Hebrews 11, 39, and 40, and these having obtained a good report through faith, received not the promise, God having provided some better thing for us, that they without us should not be perfect. And so under the, uh, the Old Testament, they had a righteousness that was imperfect. They didn't get, it, they didn't get the full package. They got the, they got the promissory righteousness. They got it imputed to them based on faith, but they still had to receive the righteousness. That's why Abraham's bosom was in the upper chambers of the departed spirits because he could not, he did not have the perfect righteousness. In other words, he had not brought into, been brought into the new birth. He had to be born again too. All the Old Testament saints had to believe on Jesus when he went and preached to the captives. Then they captivity captive, they received the perfect righteousness, and then they went into heaven. Glory to God. And, uh, so praise God. The New Testament saints, 2 Corinthians 5, 17, therefore if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things become new, and all things are of God. Down in verse 21, he knew no sin, was made sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. So we have uh, the first step to getting into the hall of fame of faith is get saved. You ain't going to get there if you ain't saved. Say, I can't get there if I ain't saved. All right. Secondly, let's look back up here at this verse where it says um, that, e that Enoch was translated, not seeing death, that he should not be found because God had translated him. For before his translation, he had this testimony that he pleased God. He had a testimony that he pleased God. Hallelujah. But without faith, it's impossible to please him. So what we have here, we have to please God by seeking him. What does the Bible say? It says that, you know, that uh, without faith, it's impossible to please him. For they that come to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Can I get an amen? All right. So we have to be seekers. And listen, we make churches seeker friendly they're looking we're made, we've made it into they made it seeker sensitive or seeker friendly and it's not that they're seeking god they're seeking the comforts of a comfortable place to go and fulfill their religious need we need to be pursuers after god as a matter of fact one guy came to jesus one day and when he came to jesus he said master what must i do to be saved he said go sell everything you got give it to the poor take up your cross and follow me and he went away he didn't make it real seeker sensitive did he Think about it. I mean, he flat out made it tough. And the Bible says he turned and went his way because he, he was saddened because he had much riches. But you see, Jesus knew he had, to get, he had to get to the place where he didn't have independence on anything except the Lord if he was going to follow him. We tell him, just come like you are, stay like you are, don't, don't, don't make any changes, you'll still get to heaven. See, that's, we, we call it seeker sensitive, and that's just stupid. We got to seek after God. We have to pursue God. As a deer panteth for the water, so my soul longeth after thee. As in a dry and thirsty land. That's not uh, easy. That's something I just pursue him with everything they got. We have to be pursuers of God. Somebody said we got to be pursuers of God. You know, Jesus said in Matthew 6, 33. Well, we better go to Matthew 6, 33. You know, Jesus' ministry probably wouldn't be accepted today. That went over big. But that's the truth. In most churches, it wouldn't, his ministry wouldn't go over. Because we have narratives that, you know, say all kinds of things and that Jesus didn't say. Matthew 6, verse 31, take no thought saying, what shall we eat? 
What shall we drink? Or wherewithal shall we be clothed? For after all these things do the Gentiles seek. Now, here in this particular passage, and actually, a lot of times when, when the word is Gentile is used, yes, it is re referring to an ethnos. It's referring to an, a group of people out, who are not Jews. But the implication here is not as much about the fact they're not Jews as much as they are outside the covenant. They're non-covenant people. See, the Gentiles were people outside covenant. And so because they didn't have any covenant with God, they weren't in relationship with God, they sought after the eating, drinking, what they could wear. And Jesus said, don't you do that. These are the things that the people outside the covenant seek after. But what did he go on to say? For your heavenly Father knoweth you have need of these things. All right? So the covenant people have, have a Father who knows they have need of these things. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. So Jesus, now, now Jesus said, don't seek after these things, but then he gives the antithesis to this, but seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things, what things? That what you'll eat, what you'll drink, what you'll wear shall be added unto you. Take no thought for the morrow, for the morrow shall take thought for the things of itself. Sufficient unto the day is the evil thereof. All right, so Jesus says we have to be God seekers. Everybody say, I'm a God seeker. It doesn't, it's not going to be easy to seek God every time. You can make it, as, you, you, we try to make everything so comfortable, so perfect, so easy. You know, there's no commitment, there's no, there's no strain on anybody to get to God. But where is the pursuit of righteousness? Where is the pursuit of God? Where is the pursuit, as the psalmist said, we are recorded, as a deer panteth after the water, so my soul longeth after thee. How? How does it so long after him? As in a dry and thirsty land. Wow. We're not talking about, you know, well, you know, I'm, I'm, I want a little Starbucks. So I'm going to drive over to Harris Teeter. They got one right inside of Harris Teeter. I'm going to walk right in and grab me a Starbucks. Hallelujah. Won't even have to wait because there's, no, there's nobody other to wait for. It is, a few people walk by every little while, once in a while and get them a Starbucks. That's not like a man who's been out in the desert or out in the heat and he had not had any water in several hours or days or whatever and he's, he's hungry, he's thirsty, he, he's in a dry and thirsty land, he needs water. There's a, there's a pursuit, there's a desire to have that. Amen. I think that we don't have enough people who are desirous of God we're trying to make them, we're trying to get them into the, our folds and we're trying to get their name on the rolls and we're trying to make them, uh, appease them that they're, that they're in the kingdom or in the family so that we can talk about how big everything is when the reality is they're not coming in pursuit of God. If you're ever going to get in the Hall of Fame of Faith, you've got to be a God pursuer. You've got to be a God seeker. Amen? Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness these things be added unto you. So that walk of faith, trusting in God, um, you know, Hebrews 11, 6 says, without faith it's impossible to please him. But you know that this that faith walk is a fundamental principle or doctrine of Christ. Hebrews 11, I mean, Hebrews 6, 1 says, therefore leaving the principles of the doctrine of Christ, let us go on to perfection, not laying again the foundation of repentance from dead's work and of faith toward God. Those are fundamental principles of the kingdom. Uh, did you notice it says repentance from dead works? Yeah. Repentance. That's a fundamental doctrine of Christ. Well, that's not grace. Well, that's a fundamental doctrine. Everybody say fundamental doctrine. I don't mind messing up somebody's theology if the Bible messes it up. Or, or flakeology. Some stuff's not theology, it's flakeology. Hello. And we don't believe in repentance. Well, well, God does. It just means to change your mind. You're, you're so shallow on that definition and, and misinterpreting and not doing enough study. There's more to it than that. Trust me. All right. So, we have to be seekers of God. So I, I desire... And I commit to be a seeker of God. Second, we got to take heed to God's voice 
and obey. Remember, by faith, Abraham, when he was called to go out into a place he should, after receiving an inheritance, obeyed. Somebody told me one time, because they were under grace, they didn't have to obey. Well, Abraham did. And it's in Hebrews 11, which is the hall of fame of faith, and it's our example. Amen. Hallelujah. Um, Acts 5, 29 and, 30, and, and, and verse 32 of that same passage. Then Peter and the other apostles answered and said, We ought to obey God rather than man. In verse 32, and we are his witnesses of these things, and so is the Holy Ghost whom God has given to them that obey him. I quoted uh, Isaiah 119 one time, if you be willing and obedient, we, good land. Ah, that's the Old Testament. Well, you know, <laughs> you get the Holy Ghost if you obey. Peter said we ought to obey God rather than man. Obedience is still required, Okay. When God tells you something, if you're going to get in the Hall of Fame of Faith, you're going to have to obey. Somebody say, I got to obey. You're not going to get around it. You got to obey. Uh, verse 17, by faith, Abraham, when he was tried, offered up Isaac, that he, that, that he and he that had received the promises offered up his only begotten son, of whom it was said, that in Isaac shall thy seed be called, um, accounted that God was able to raise him up even from the dead, from whence also he received him in a figure. So Abraham obeyed. Even in the most difficult circumstances of, of the demands or command of God to do something, he obeyed. But guess where Abraham is? He's in the hall of fame of faith. I'd rather, and listen, we, we, we should be desirous of being in the hall of fame of faith and not ending up on the junk pile of the shipwreck. Hello. Bob, Paul talks about some people who've, become, who've made shipwreck concerning the faith. Why? Because they, they didn't obey. They didn't do the things God told them to do. We have to take heed to God's word and obey. Amen? Joshua 1.8 says, This book of the law shall not depart out of your mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night, that you may observe to do according to all that's written therein. For then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, then thou shalt have good success. You see, you got to get the word of God, then you got to obey the word of God. And if God's word tells you to do it, you got to do it. Can't get around it, Joe. Can't get around it, Penny. God says do it, you got to do it. Listen, and Isaiah 119 put a qualifier on that or a parameter on it. Not only is the obedience required, the willingness to do it's required. In other words, you've got to have the right attitude about it. God says do it, you've got to have the right attitude about it. You've got to understand <clears throat> that if God said do it, he, did, he said do it for a reason. And it's not to hurt you. James 121 says, receive with meekness the engrafted word which is able to save your souls. It goes on and says, but be ye doers of the word, not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. What does it mean to be a doer of the word? Obey. Obey. The word says it, you do it. Amen. Isn't that right? Deuteronomy chapter 6. If anybody tells you you don't need to look at the Old Testament, turn them off. Get rid of their books and don't listen to them. Because the New Testament says that the things about the children of Israel were written as examples for us. Hallelujah. Uh, Deuteronomy 6, now the, verse 1, these are the commandments and statutes and judgments which the Lord your God commanded to teach you, that you might do them in the land whether you go to possess it, that thou mightest fear the Lord thy God to keep all his statutes and his commandments, which I command thee, thou and thy son and thy son's son, and all the days of thy life. Why? And that thy days may be prolonged. Hear therefore, O Israel, and observe to do it. Observe, this is just obedience. Observing to do it's obeying. That it may be well with thee, that you may be increased mightily, as the Lord God of thy fathers has promised thee in the land that floweth with milk and honey. See, everybody wants to get going there and say, I'm under grace. I get the land that flows with milk and honey. But here, all we find out is that it's obedience that allowed us to get into the land that flowed with milk and honey and get the milk and honey. Obeying his commandments, that we were prolonged, that it's well with us. Amen? Ab we, we have Abraham in the hall of fame of faith. We have um, Abraham when he was called to go into another land. He obeyed. Notice he's in the hall of fame of faith. That is in the New Testament. Hebrews 11 is New Testament. Because in case you've just been listening to somebody and not reading your Bible for yourself, you got people now saying, well, what Jesus said was under the old covenant, so it doesn't apply to us. I mean, you're like, 
I mean, these people get dumber and dumber. Hello? This whole chapter has nobody but Old Testament saints in it. And they're written as an example for us. That's what the Bible says. Don't get too excited. You know, calm down. Let me finish my sermon. Matthew chapter 7. Hallelujah. Matthew 7, down in verse 24. It says here, uh, Therefore, whatsoever, uh, whosoever heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them, I'll liken him unto a wise man which built his house upon the rock. And uh, now let me say something here. Remember, well, Jesus' ministry wasn't until the old church. Was, 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 uh, do you remember what he said about the Holy Ghost? He was going to teach and bring all things to your remembrance, whatever he had said. The ministry of the Holy Ghost to the church was going to be to bring to remembrance all the things that Jesus said. I said that the, Jesus said that the ministry of the Holy Ghost would be to bring to their remembrance everything he said. Yeah, ouch. There you go. Now, if the Holy Ghost is going to come to the church in the New Testament Holy Ghost dispensation age and tell us <clears throat> and bring to us everything, remember us everything Jesus said, and we got a record of what Jesus said, then what Jesus said is relevant to us. Amen. And I liken you unto the man who heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them. So what are we talking about? We're talking all about obedience, to be doers of the word, amen, to hear the word, to take heed to the word. I'll liken him into a wise man. Okay, so now Jesus is saying, if you hear what he says and do with him. Now, <clears throat> well, that was old covenant. Yeah, but the Holy Ghost is now in this age, and he's telling us what he's remembering or reminding us everything that Jesus said. So he's reminding us in Matthew 7 that Jesus said, he overhears my sayings and does them. That's now New Testament, grace age doctrine. What Jesus said, we do. I'll liken him unto a, what kind of man? A wise man, which built his house upon a rock. And the rain descended, the floods came, the winds blew, the beat upon that home, and it fell not, for it was founded upon a rock. <coughs> Remember that the Bible says that the church is built on the um, chief priest and apostle, or chief apostles, Jesus himself being the chief cornerstone. Not just Jesus, the person. He was, it was the embodiment of his doctrine that is the chief cornerstone. And then the apostles built on that. Hello? But Jesus is the cornerstone. Remember that old song? Jesus is the cornerstone. Came for sinners to atone. Though rejected by his own. He became the cornerstone. Nobody remembers that song? Yeah. You remember that song. All right. Thank you. <coughs> Got one person who remembers that song. Hallelujah. Glory. Jesus is the chief cornerstone. His doctrine is the chief cornerstone of the church. Now, I'm going to tell you something, folks. People start coming along and then cutting Jesus' ministry off from the New Testament or from the, new, from the church age So because we're under grace or we're under some kind of special faith, we're under some kind of special this or some special that, when, when, when the Bible says it's the cornerstone of the church. Amen. Well, what he taught wasn't for me. Well, the Holy Ghost is going to tell you what he said and it's going to remind you of what he said. Therefore, it must be for you. Now, I know there's some things he said in, in certain, in, under certain conditions that were answers to a question at that time. But here he's teaching. This is a general message. This isn't a, a specific question. And he was answering at that moment. Shall we render unto Caesar whatever? Okay. Uh, he's teaching. He's actually speaking of his doctrine. And the one who heareth these things of mine and doeth them not, Shall we like it unto a foolish man who built his house on the sand? 
And the rain descended, the floods came, the winds blew and beat that house, and it fell, and great was the fall of it. And when it came to pass, when Jesus had ended these sayings, the people were astonished at his doctrine. At his doctrine. Okay? All right. So we have here, we need to take heed to God's word. Jesus said, if you hear it and don't do it, then you're, you're foolish. James said, be doers of the word, not hearers only, deceiving your own self. What's he saying? What Jesus just said, he that heareth these sayings of mine, doeth them not, I'll liken him unto a foolish man. Hello? Jesus said, you know, what John, James is just really reiterating or re, re, uh, reverberating, giving a different verbiage to what Jesus said, you know? But be ye do, uh, receive with meekness the engrafted word of God, which is able to save your soul. Well, that is sozo, you know, in, in, in that context. It's not talking about getting born again. You don't get a born again soul. Your soul gets transformed. It has a metamorphosis by the renewing of your mind. Okay? What's the, he says, you know, James, James says, uh, receive with meekness the engrafted word, which is able to sozo your suke, your soul. When you hear the word, you do the word. Then he goes on the next verse and says, but be ye doers of the word, not hearers only. Deceiving your own selves. The, the hearer who's not a doer is deceived. Or as Jesus said, foolish. You are deceived. If you think you can go down to the outer banks and build you a house on the sand. Hello. And the first little storm, it only has to be a class five. It, it can be a, a tropical storm. Comes by. And run some water in there, you know, with, some, with a little, little tidal surge. And it's going to wash your house out the sea. You are deceived if you think it's going to stand. Hello? If you think it's going to stand in the sand, you are crazy. You go, you go down to the beach now, of course, all the laws are changed. You can't, you can't even build it on the ground. You've got to build it on pylons. And they'll go in there and they'll drive these big old, you know, like telephone poles, but big boat pylons, and they'll drive them down and drive them down and drive them down and drive them down. And, you know, uh, sometimes I wonder why they just go ahead and, and, and use some type of coated iron or something. I, I know it could rust down there, but what, is there something they could put where they could just drive right on this and go, coon, 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 and then put another one on, coon, 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 until they get down to actual bed, I mean, get down to the rock. But even if it's bad enough, those, sometimes those things will fall. But, I mean, it's got to be a bad storm. Usually the, the storms will come in, and they're up 10, 15 foot high in the air, and the tidal surge will go up under it. You, know, you got a storage unit down there. It'd get messed up, but the house stands. And we were down there one time a number of years ago. At, at, uh, the boss of the place where Janie worked had a cottage. He would rent it. We went down there, and we were out there on. We were down at Avon. Now you could get up on the on the uh, condo, on the uh, the uh, cottage or whatever you call it down there. It's up on those pylons. You stand on the deck. You can look this way. You can see the ocean. You look over here, and you see uh, the Albemarle Sound, thirty miles across. You're on this little 400-foot wide strip of land with a road in it. Hello. You're deceived if you think you can build on the sand and it stand. But he, you build it on the rock. Storms come and stand up. They still stand. Well, they take a beat, but they still stand. Amen. Jesus said if you'll hear the word and do the word, you'll stand when the toughest storms show up. Amen. You'll still be standing. When, they, when, when it comes in, blows in, blows up, and blows back out, you'll still be standing. Amen. Hallelujah. And so in, in, in he taking, so taking heed to the word of God and obeying God's voice kind of go together. Uh, you know, they really do. Because when you hear the word, you've got to be a doer of the word. And if you're not, you're deceiving your own self. Amen. Next, um, the Bible says that Sarah received strength to conceive seed when she was delivered of a child, though she was past age, because she judged him faithful who promised. You've got to judge God faithful. You've got to start believing that God will do what God said that God would do. That God's not a liar. God's, God will tell, God speaks the word. God speaks the truth. God does what he said he's going to do. God has to be judged faithful. Say, God's got to be judged faithful. Romans 4, 20 and 21. Now, I'm not going to read all that. I got about a bunch of verses here, but I'm not going to read them all. Hallelujah. Romans 4, 20. Abraham staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strong in faith, giving glory to God. And being fully persuaded that what he had promised, he was able also to 
perform. What did he do? He, he, had, he had judged God faithful and he received the promise, amen, even though it didn't look like it could happen. Hebrews 10, 23. It's good to be alive in the Lord. Amen. Amen. Don't know always how he's going to answer. We know he's going to answer. I mean, don't know how he's going to do it, but God's going to do it. Amen. Hebrews 10, 23. Let us hold, the hold fast the profession of our faith without wavering. Why? He is faithful that promised. We have to be, uh, De Deuteronomy 7, 9. We have, to, we have to be people who judge God's faithfulness. 7, 9 says, um, know therefore that the Lord thy God, he is God. This is what it says next. The faithful God who keepeth covenant and mercy with, with them that love him and keep his commandments to a thousand generations. Oh, keep his commandments. Oh, no, I don't like that part. Oh, I love the Lord. He, he says, start running around shagging all the women. Ah, no, 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 no. He knows my flesh. I can't control myself. He said he, get, he blesses those that keep his commandments. You know, it's amazing. You know, 20 years ago, we wouldn't, have, we wouldn't have had to say some of these things. Or even 30 years ago, we wouldn't even thought about saying some of these things. 40 years ago, we were, we were, uh, we were just, you know, telling people to keep, keep serving God and doing this. And they were just, they separate themselves under the things of God. Now we're trying to tell people, hey, you can't live like the devil and still get all the blessings. Shouldn't be that way. Why? We need to know that the Lord thy God, he is God, the faithful God. He, he keeps covenant. And mercy with them who? Love him and keep his commandments. To a thousand generations. Next verse, he repayeth them that hate him to their face to destroy them. He will not be slack to him that hateth him. He will repay him to the face. Thou shalt therefore keep the commandments and the statutes and the judgment, which I commanded this day to do them. But back up verse nine. Uh, uh, nine he's the faithful God. Joe say he's the faithful God. Amen. He's the faithful God. Hallelujah. Not a faithful God, the faithful God. Glory to God. 1 Corinthians 1, 9. And true to the end. That's right. Why? He's the Lord. He changes not. 1 Corinthians 1, 9. God is faithful by whom you were called into the fellowship of his son, the Lord uh, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And we could go on and on. There's, there's another seven or eight verses here talking about the faithfulness of God. 1 John 1, 9. Look over there. I'm going to back up to verse 7 then when we get over there, though, or 6. We'll, we'll, we'll see. First John. Verse 8. If we say we have no sin, we, we deceive ourselves. Now, this really means, doesn't mean we're living currently in sin. It means if we say we never sinned, we deceive ourselves. I've never done anything wrong. Then you don't need Jesus. If you've never sinned, you don't need Jesus. Jesus said, I didn't come to call the righteous to repentance. I come to call the, the, the lost. Amen. We deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, what is he? Faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Hallelujah. He is faithful. Now, the last point here is we have to endure. We, now, <clears throat> endurance is not... Tying or not at the bottom rope and hanging on for dear life, hoping you'll make it. Okay? Endurance is remaining steadfast. See, when we talk about running a, a marathon, those who endure are the ones who, who get in a steady pace and stay that way the entire race. Now, you know the guys who bolt out of the gate on the, on the 26-mile marathons or 26-point-something for like a... a 26.2, thank you. Okay? All right? And then we have 5Ks and 10Ks, you know, 3.2 and 6.4 miles, that kind of thing. But a marathon is 26.2 miles. The guy who goes out of the box like, uh, like a jackrabbit ain't going to make it. Who's going to make it? The one who starts out at a, at a steady pace that they, they know they can, they can remain steadfast with that pace for 26.2 miles. And they're going, they're going to go, and they're going to run. They're going to run, and they're going to run. But they're, going to be, they're not going to be having these, these bursts of speed where they, they burn up all that. They, they know for the, long, for the long haul, they've got to remain steadfast. They've got to endure. 
and as they remain steadfast, they finish the race. Amen? Hallelujah. Um, Romans 12, 12 says, we rejoice in hope, we are patient. Now, that comes from the same word, the, 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 the hupomino. Here, it means the same thing as uh, endureth or remain steadfast, patient in tribulation. Uh, 1 Corinthians 13, 7, that love bears all things, believes all things, hope things, all things, bear, uh, endures all things. Not, it remains steadfast in everything. Okay? Uh, 2 Timothy 10, therefore I endure, or I remain steadfast all, in all things for the elect's sake. Glory, that we may obtain the sal salvation which is of Christ Jesus um, with eternal glory. Uh, Hebrews 10, 32, but call it to remembrance the former days in which after you were illuminated, you endured or you remained steadfast during a great fight of afflictions. See, all these guys had a word from God. They obeyed. They went out. And then trouble showed up. Brother Hager used to say, well, some people think they're going to go through life on flowery beds of ease. And they're going to get the blessing of God, drop it on them like ripe cherries off a tree. Hallelujah. None of that's true. You got to be steadfast. You got to endure. You got to remain stable during all these difficult times. Um, Jesus, looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross or remained steadfast. Hey, why? Who for the joy that was set before him, he looked on the other side of all that stuff and stayed steadfast. Amen despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. For consider him that endured such, or remained steadfast during such contradiction of sinners against himself, lest ye be wearied and faint in your minds. See, we can get wearied and faint in our minds. That's where you'll get defeated. So that's where you'll get defeated, when you become wearied and faint in your minds. Cast not away your confidence. Amen? Don't cast away your confidence. I said, don't cast away your confidence. Why? Because it has great recompense of reward. Your confidence will get. What's confidence? Confidence, you're confident God's going to do it. It helps you stay steadfast. Remain steadfast. Not give up and quit. Not throw in the towel. We got to be like Rocky. 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 Don't cut it, cut it. But Rocky. Adrian. Stay down, Rocky. Dun 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 we gotta, be, we gotta be playing the Rocky music. Get back up. Stay steadfast. Don't quit. Amen. Why? Because we, you know, we just gotta have so much in us that we, there's no quit left in us. Not that we don't have any wind left in us. We don't have any quit left in us. We just keep going and going and going. Amen. We trust that you were blessed by the Word of God and the flow of the Spirit of God in this service. If you would like to contact us, please write us via email at office at fbc.org or using our mailing address, P.O. Box 7752, Greensboro, North Carolina, 27417. If you would like to contribute to our ministry, please go to our website at www.fbc.org and click on the giving online button. Thank you, and may God richly bless you for your giving.